I'm Lee Chantel from VivaLaVegan.net and with me today is Chris. He's a vegan from Brisbane who is now living in Japan. You may also know him as CJ. Hi Chris. Hello. Hello. And Chris and I this year are going to do some podcasts for you. So if yeah. you can think of so a better, what name are we going to have? No, I don't, we don't have a name yet, but maybe we could just leave it unnamed. Unnamed? Okay. Yeah. But not, un, not call it unnamed. No. But you know. It doesn't necessarily have to have a name. Let's not put labels on things. Okay, that's fair. And um, Chris and I have known each other for quite a while. At least five years, I would say. Yeah, at least at least five. See, I thought it was ten before, but then, yeah, that's... Because it, it, was, a, it, okay. it was around that Greenwash Festival where we met, I'm sure. Was it actually called Greenwash? No, it was called something else, but I can't or remember what it was called. you having a dig at it? Well, well... Um, yeah, maybe I am actually because yep. I do have a problem with environmental festivals calling themselves environmental and then selling non-vegan um, stuff and stuff. What about what about plastic bottles? And yeah, plastic That's bottles. That's what pissed me off. They sold like Coca-Cola products. And yeah. other like other businesses there were not green or environmental. They just wanted to be there to look green. So yeah. that does annoy me a bit. Yes, it does. Yeah, but you know, I think greenwashing. Is better than not greenwashing, you know. Um. So, what would not greenwashing be? You know, like people that are actively uh, avoiding the whole idea of not not just climate change, but you know, the environment isn't an important part of our ecosystem. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Definitely. Kind of separate themselves from being outside the system. Yeah. You know, like I think your government right there in Queensland at the moment is trying to do that with, you know, def definitely trying to put. Uh, ports in silly places and roads I saw yesterday in really silly places on the outside of the Great Dividing Range where something like 7% of the Queensland population live. Oh, that's really helpful, isn't it? Yeah, and yeah, I, I gather it won't be a toll road, it'll be pay, paid for by, you know, the consumer. <laughs> we do like toll roads here though. Yeah, but the toll roads are in places where people need to, want to use them. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. The exactly. tolls are just too expensive. Like, it, they, they won't put a toll road somewhere. Because, you know, like, that 7% might be the 7% they need to get them over the line, yeah. you know, election. So, it's kind of, it's called um, pork barreling, where, you know, mm. you can't put pork into the, you know, give someone something good so that mm. they vote for you. You know, pork they're like, beans. oh, we like that guy. <laughs> like, you know, uh, I think a good example is like, um... Uh, the, the Gillard government did it with that election. They put the MBN into a couple of tight seats, mm. you know. So, so yeah. we've got in Queensland. We have the election happening on I think it's the thirty first or one of the one of the the last Saturday of the month. So the state, the Queensland state election. So yeah, it's actually. It's, I think it's actually a pretty straightforward election. I think the Liberal Party will win, but they shouldn't because I think people are dumb. They even watch too much. <laughs> and I think it's very vital for people to, you know, get out there, vote early, and definitely stay around and hand out some flyers for the team that you support. But just don't make that the LMP <laughs> or any of the majors, either of the majors. <laughs> well, I think the Labor Party is the lesser of two evils. You know, they're getting paid. They're getting paid for by the same people. But do you really, you know, do you want Hitler or Stalin? You kind of want Stalin. <laughs> Don't yeah, you? you don't want to hit long. <laughs> I I like to think we'll have Buddha sometimes, you know. I, I like to live in hope, and it does get me depressed when it doesn't work out. But I still live in hope. Mm. But yeah, yeah. so. I, I, but I definitely prefer Stalin. Just let's put that on the record. Stalin over. Good Hitler. to know. Good to know. Yeah. <laughs> Even though Hitler was supposedly vegetarian. Yeah. That's always well, an anti-vegan. Um, I don't know why they say that. It's like, are you trying to say that you're worse than Hitler? Like, it's I such a it, strange thing to say. They're like, we eat meat, we're worse than Hitler. I think it's like, oh, well, you know, if you're saying I should be vegan and Hitler was vegan or vegetarian, then, you know, that's not cool. And are you supporting that? I don't know. Who knows with all the anti-vegan stuff? Don't, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, lo I love a good troll. There's actually two uh, websites that we'll talk about later. Yeah. I think, or Facebook pages that we'll talk about later. Mm -hmm. um, there's one that gets trolled very regularly, the vegetarians page, which is kind of just for vegetarians, but it converts more vegans than you've ever, you could imagine. And um, 
the there's always trolls in there. It's very like very funny to see how many trolls actually look like trolls. That you know, there's like it's very funny to see ugly people trolling people. <laughs> Hilarious. Like, if you, why would you put yourself in that position where people can pick on you back? I know, you know? definitely. There was something just recently I read um, some articles online because I work in social media marketing, know a lot about online stuff. And there was an article about how more men actually will comment or will troll than women do. And I'm not, I'm not sure about that. I, I don't, I don't think that would be. I, I would imagine that's the case. Like in yeah, ninety, I, I would have thought it's just men. Yeah. You know, because otherwise it's kind of like a lot of women will have like put. Uh, like negative comments but ones that they kind of back up with their own opinion mm. whereas tro- trolling's kind of just having a go you know like just making fun of something that they like, they might not necessarily even disagree with yeah. you know like when people just write bacon on, yeah. on vegan videos or something it's and funny. you're just like, like everyone, everyone likes smoked food like <laughs> smoked fatty food's awesome like we get we get that you like bacon but you know you can have olives smoked olives <laughs> tastes great <laughs> and it's just not funny anymore we've been hearing it for quite a few years actually um I'm, I've been vegan for 18 years as of this month January wow. 2015 so that's that been a long time what yeah. about what about you how long have you been vegan oh, I literally don't know I, I was like because I, I stayed, in my, I lived in my parents' house. My parents are very, very traditional, you know, meat and three veg kind of family. So, I was vegetarian and vegan, or maybe not necessarily vegan as much, but um, I think I definitely started having soy coffee when I was seventeen. Mm-hmm. So, you know, maybe sometime, sometime around there, maybe earlier, but definitely vegetarian. A lot, or even if I did eat meat for some time. Uh, I was vegetarian curious, and I'd normally mm-hmm. eat, say, just the vegetarian parts of the meal. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe eat the same, and then give the steak to my dad. <laughs> I can't, I can't really remember. It's not, it's not, it's something that I was kind of ashamed of for a while. I didn't realize that it was something that later on in life I'd be proud of. <laughs> Isn't that funny how things change? No, nah. but it's not necessarily like something to be proud of. It's a very, very simple, you know, but. Yeah, something that I was definitely ashamed of. Just growing up in, in an environment where it wasn't necessarily ever going to be supported. Like, both mm. both of my parents are very supportive of it. But, yeah, just... Yeah, it's funny It's funny how things change. And so what made you become proud of it? I don't know. Just, I think, just acceptance. People are kind of shy about something. It's like, you know, when you're 14, you're the only person that wanks in the world, you know, like you don't realize that other people do and it's not till later in life, later on in life, that you can go, well, yeah, you know, everyone does it. If you don't, you're crazy. <laughs> and I guess maybe also like finding like-minded people is always helpful, especially with vegan stuff. Yeah, I feel the internet really made that very simple, very easy to get um, information and yeah, very, very very different now than what I'd imagine it would have been back in the, you know, Peter Singer days, where he was kind of like, it was only really that book, you know? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and like Animal Liberation in, you know, Australia and some of the earliest sort of pioneers of the movement, like, there wasn't much happening for the large majority of people and there was only, I guess it's still the same thing now, there's still only a small amount of people who actually do a lot of work for the movement. Mm. But I guess there's a lot more ways to get the message out. Yeah. Which is helpful. It, it seems like now it's kind of, those people are very, um, like, not productive, you know what I mean? Like, kind of counterproductive to veganism where they're kind of, they love it, they love it so much and they feel it so deep within themselves that how they feel the need to criticize people that aren't. Yeah, and definitely. Very, very hurtful. Mm. It's particularly now there's like, we're, we we might might as well talk about it now. The two Facebook Those pages groups, that they're groups. Yeah. So one's a closed group and one's an open group. So tell tell me about them. You've got vegans in Australia. That's the closed group, and a European page called Vegetarians. Yeah. So the, the vegans in Australia seems to be very negative, and people just having very strong opinions about stupid shit that we kind of all agree on, like. You know, people only tend to argue about the 2% that they disagree on, yeah. you know? Like, the difference between being a feminist and a humanist is 
um, I don't know, maybe like some, some dogmatic things or like like some strange tautology that's in either one. But the things that really separate them is really just the name, mm. you know? And there's a lot of arguing in between the two. Yeah. And I think this is something very similar where everyone's, you know, kind of on the same page, but, you know, one guy might support Peter and one guy might really hate it, mm. you know? And they'll argue for like 50 comments or 60 comments. And what and about, is it like abolitionist versus welfareist as well? I always see that argument come up a lot. Oh, I don't, I don't necessarily think these people are smart enough or that involved. They kind of... So what are the things you see come up all the time then? What You say there's a lot of negativity and argument. Like, is there a thing that oh, comes did, up all the time? People maybe not just being, not being as vegan as possible. Uh, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, you can only be a certain, like... 99% vegan is not vegan, right? <laughs> you know? But, like, I don't think 101% vegan is any more vegan. And it's just, like, really... I don't know, the, straight, the same things, you know, like, people with... Obviously, people with pets is a... is a big contentious issue. And just... People just not being supportive of each other. Yeah. The, up, the other page... So, that's the vegans of Australia. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of... I've seen a lot of people leave that, and a couple of people that not necessarily that I'm friends with, but people that I became friends with by just agreeing with them on the page. Of like mm. everyone on there is an idiot, mm. you know. And um, I do know friends. a lot of non-vegan people who I've heard from that were on that page that just went there for a bit of education. That said that they left the page and they don't want to be vegan because yeah. of, because it's of that very- and certain people that were on it, which is yeah. really sad. Yeah, well, uh, we, I'll tell you about this off air and then we can decide whether we'll talk about it next week. So tell me about the other side of the coin then, the positive the, one from Europe. The, the vegetarians page is like, I don't know, I think most of the people that come on there as vegetarians or they come on there to get information, maybe they're not even vegetarian yet mm-hmm. and they come on for recipes or some shit, they become vegetarian and then they become you know, later on in the later on in the time, they might become uh, vegan. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's just a really, really, really positive page, and I encourage everyone to get on there. And there's great recipes, even like some of the recipes that I see on here that um, have egg or dairy, like really simple, really simple things to substitute. Mm. And people will get on there and say, instead of going, oh, you're a fucking baby killer, I can't believe you're eating cheese, (laughs) which would be something that might happen on the other page. (laughs) Um, They go, you know, you could use this, like almond milk or something, and then the person will try it and, you know, you know, it's kind of like, just gives you a lot more options when people are a little bit nicer. And sounds like more education. Yeah, more education and... You know, it's all the same stuff. Like, everyone hates fur, so everyone can kind of rally around the fur issue, and mm-hmm. they can rally around, you know, mistreatment of animals, and you know, there's kind of other things that they can kind of we can all work together on. And yeah, it's difficult when people post something in a different language, and it's got to get translated via Bing. Oh yeah, because <laughs> you get maybe most of it. <laughs> yeah, I was it's- actually um. I was found out yesterday that in Europe, like eighty percent of people are on Facebook. Like a massive amount of people are on Facebook. But I, just, all, I figured everyone's on Facebook anyway. Well, most people are, I guess, nowadays. But like all the other social media channels, like really low percentages. Like some, I think something like ridiculous, like eight percent of people are on Twitter. In Europe, really, for example, yeah. I, I'm on Twitter, but I never use it. I never check it. I never, I never, like, just because it's not interactive, mm. you know, it's kind of hard to get involved in it. Like, I literally don't give a shit about half the things that people say about on Facebook. I but, guess you know, it, it depends when, what you share or who you follow, don't you think? Yeah, maybe. Maybe, well, maybe that's it. Maybe that's why I haven't been interested in Twitter because it's just not good. Well, I really like Twitter because it's very, like, I'm a, a bit of a scanner or a speed reader, so I can just go, oh, yeah, I like that, or, and I open up, you know, 20 tabs or something silly. But, you know, that that's just more interesting for me, and I feel like I can engage with a lot of people as well, like, you just at them, or and especially hashtags as well. Yeah. So, it just, it just depends. Just depends well, ha- what you're hashtags into. are a big thing at the moment, aren't they? 
Yeah, well, it's just a way to get involved with something like, you know, the Queensland election, for example, one of their hashtags. Wait, AFL wait, what's grand the, final. What's the... What's the main one? Ozpol. Is that it? Um, it, that's what it was um, for the um, Australian national elections a couple of years ago. But I would say to be like QLD votes. Hashtag QLD right. votes. I'm, I don't know that as a fact though. But um, yeah, something like that, I'd say. Yeah. It's so, it's so, um, collect, if, do they interact through the hashtag? Yes, you can definitely. Yeah. Yeah, right. So it's so hard to like, because you know, it's people on two different teams who've already made up their mind. Yeah. You know, they're like true. trying to convince people, and they're like, yeah. oh, I love the LMP. They're like, yeah. I love the ALP. Yeah. Yeah, but there's like some little guy, I like the Greens. There's you know? definitely a lot more trolling on Twitter. Like, because yeah. you have, especially with like well known people, it's just such an easier way to interact with them. And there's a lot of people that have a lot of hate online. Yeah. Mm, which yeah. is sad. But, but you know, if you disagree with someone, give it, sticking it to them in a public forum is amazing. Yeah, you know? oh, definitely. So, yeah, definitely. and particularly even if like, I think a lot of trolling stems out of jealousy. You know, so it's it's nice to if you're jealous of something, it's really nice to get it off your chest. You know, like even if they don't realize that's what they're doing. But then I don't know, like. I've heard of a few, I can't remember who it was, but someone was talking about they actually went through and responded to tweets and they said, oh, hey, like, I really don't like it when you say this or something. And the person would go, oh, wow, you actually responded to me. And they sort of would change their tune a bit. I don't yeah. know how many people have the time to do that. But, um, yeah, sometimes it works, but most of the time, not so. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine Tom Cruise responding to you, definitely. <laughs> I can't either. Don't worry about him. He's got eight people working on Twitter for him. <laughs> but so, so Chris, what's... you're in... Um, oh, did you want to say anything more about those groups? Oh, no, no, no. I I, th- I think maybe if you get on there and check them out, then we can... <clears throat> I'm not on Twitter. I'm not on Facebook personally anymore. I just run my pages and some, and some yeah. clients' pages, but I don't have time for groups because, yeah, like you said, it's mostly negative and yeah. uh, I just don't really care what most people's opinions are with certain things you know yeah maybe maybe you guys can all check this out uh indian parent forum there's a wedding pickle that sounds amazing eight five minute instant mango wedding pickle what's that a wedding pickle a pickle that you have at your wedding some kind of pickles you know indian pickles are the best like chutney sort of thing yeah like a pickle yeah okay something different so Chris, you're in Japan. Yes. Um, in Osaka. Yeah. Um, why'd you go there? Uh, my girlfriend's Japanese. Mhm. We have a baby. We want to raise the baby in a nice environment. It's very cheap to live here, and everyone's very nice and it's very safe. Mhm. And I think there's a lot of options in life here. You know, it seems very controlled, but. If you like think outside of the con- the controlledness, I think you know there's a lot of options in life in Japan. Mm-hmm. So I think that's the main reason. Cool. And I certainly didn't come here for the food. Yeah. So because <laughs> I was yeah. going to say a couple of our mutual friends. Um, so one of our friends, Jeremy, also known yeah. as Jeremy Staples. Um, yeah. He he knew well, he's been to Japan before, and he was talking about a restaurant guide that he knew about. And another yeah. friend, Nigel, is going over to Japan today. Actually, he leaves with his girlfriend, right. Christina. And he was asking um, for some advice. So I hooked him up with you and, and Jeremy to give him some tips. And you yeah. didn't really have that many tips. Yeah, well, I think Why? Jeremy was much more positive about the <laughs> vegan situation in Japan. It's just, the problem is, is even if it looks like it's vegan and you can read the labels, there's a pretty good chance that they didn't include a lot of ingredients, oh. you know? So they don't have the laws in it like we have in Australia where everything has to be stipulated for um, allergic reactions or whatever. The mm-hmm. I think it's for allergic reactions. Yeah. And sometimes it's for religious reasons. But in Japan, they don't have that. So they might say dashi, and dashi is like a fish stock. And we were talking about this before. And oh, dashi is stock. It just means stock. Mm-hmm. So it could be fish stock. It could be totally vegan but you, you know, know you never know because they say dashy mm. you know what I mean yeah. and um yeah it's just a hard place there's a lot of 
uh, like you kind of stuck eating a lot of rice dishes or there's a lot of things that are 100% vegan except for, you know, something that's not, you know what I mean? Like they're 99% vegan, they add something in there that doesn't need it for flavor. Mm. You know what I mean? And what's bonito flakes? Bonito flakes are like just dried fish. Okay. Like, yeah, really disgusting. It looks like sea, uh, fish, you know, you feed fish. Oh, like, yeah. The flakes. Tanks mm. with the little flakes. Yeah. Really gross, but really popular. Mm. And then what's QP mayonnaise? Is that just a brand or QP? Oh, I didn't mention that. Yeah, QP yeah. mayonnaise, like, you can buy it in Australia. It's like this mayonnaise, it's real thick and people love it, but yeah, it's every it's everywhere. It's like it, real it's like a whole egg mayonnaise if you remember mm. from when you were a kid. I never and had I never would have had mayonnaise when I was younger. Very, very, very popular in Japan. Is but it like what they'd have at the sushi train? Yeah, that like exact same. That's, yeah. that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, is it, there's other brands. Yeah. There's no other brand. So, like, that's uh, the popular. QP mayonnaise is, like, the popular one. And so it's pretty hard, I guess, to be, to live a vegan in Japan, is it? Or you just do a heap of your own cooking? A heap of your own cooking. Uh, Mickey is making gyoza tonight. And we like eat a lot of rice, and there's these things called natto. Do you know natto? It's like is that the soybean. fermented, uh, yeah. like miso or something? Yes, yeah, fermented soybean. It's yeah. like, yeah. L- like lovely. It smells yeah. horrible. Tastes, tastes incredible. Yeah. And I ate a lot of that. A lot of miso soup, without dashi, obviously, and mm-hmm. a lot of um, I don't know, a lot of rice. There's not really many places. Oh, there's a pizza shop, an amazing pizza shop. One of the like top 10 pizzas that I've ever had. Wow. And um, like just delicious sauce. You know the secret to a good, I don't I don't really want this getting out because if people aren't Italian, they might not know this already. And I don't want everyone opening up a pizza shop, but the secret to a good pizza is use pasta sauce on the base, right? Mm. And they do it and they do it perfectly. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's I love going to that pizza. We actually went there today. A good salad, just perfect balance of flavor. What about the bass? People say that it's all about the bass. Oh, that's a song. Oh, that's so funny. Who says that? It's, it's all, all about, about the bass. Um, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm some people say that. Yeah. Well, as long like as it's not achy. Because, you know, there's only one kind of pizza base, right? So what? a pizza base is uh, yeast, flour, water, and something else. So if you put milk and egg in it, it's a cake. Right, mm. so you can only like a pizza base is only pizza base if you, it's a it's a cake if it's got milk and eggs in it. Mm. Mm. But like you ask chef, that's a that's a fact. Ask vegan black metal chef; he'll tell you. <laughs> we'll have to have him on one time. <laughs> maybe maybe he could uh, do a pizza episode. That'd be great. Yeah, I don't know if he has done one yet. We'll get that to happen. Um, so with like okay so for example mandala organic arts cafe that i think is the best pizza in the world that um is that the one down the gold, down coast? The gold coast yeah i think yeah, that's the best that, one in the world yeah and that doesn't make my top 10. they have they have quite maybe not yeah i'd say probably a thick base and then yeah. there's a new place you probably haven't been to it i think it might have opened since you've been in japan it's called soul natural foods the soul breads people no, I haven't been there, but I've seen photos and that pizza does look good. It's like a really thin base and it's just yeah. got a bit thicker around the edges. That's very yeah. good. Yeah, it's that yeah. style. That, that's a pizza base. Yeah, yeah. The, pro- the problem is with that though, and I think the reason in Australia we're very used to pizzas that hold the topping. You yeah, know? this one, the topping all falls out. I was just there Thursday. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you lift it up, the pizza flops over like yeah. this. Yeah. yeah. That's what pizza base is meant to be like. It is? Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's good then. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but Mandela's I, really in your top. You reckon that's the best one oh, ever? Oh, yeah. I love it. Because I'm not a cheese fan. Like, I've never liked cheese. And even yeah. as a vegan, I don't like many vegan cheeses. But they make their own cashew cheese or nut cheese. So I like yeah. that. And it's just a bit more healthier or not as, like, let's just smother it all with data cheese or mozzarella cheese or something. So yeah. I like that uh, aspect. Sure. I'd go nuts for a day of cheese. On. They don't. You can't buy day of cheese in Japan. There's no like. No. There's no like. What's the? Is it Red Rock or? Red Redwood. Like Redwood is that yeah, the the brand um, from the UK of like the sausages and that. You can't buy that in Japan. Like uh, nothing. You can't buy 
textured protein of, you know... Textured vegetable uh, protein, yep, TVP. Yeah, like, it's very mm. difficult to buy stuff. However, tofu is very cheap, like 17 Oh, that's good. So, it's like, it's probably one-tenth of the cost in Australia. Wow. Is what it is. Right? It's very cheap. I love that in Asian countries, like, you just go to the the market and they just wrap it up in a banana leaf for you or something it's like 50 cents or something and you're like yes yeah very very cheap so i ate a lot of tofu obviously um rice mm -hmm. i don't know there's really not much to talk about jeremy was much more positive about the thing so the, the couple of vegan restaurants that i have been to one is way overpriced and i mm -hmm. never went back i hate paying it like you know if you go somewhere and you pay like Kuan Yin. I know it's shutting down, but you kind of you go back there because it feels like you get your money's worth. Yeah, that's true. You know, like this place. I won't mention its name, but I don't. I don't feel like you get your money's worth there. Mm -hmm. You know, like very yeah. small portions and that is know, annoying. Yeah. Not delicious. Not delicious enough. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's big and not that delicious, it's kind of you kind of feel not that ripped off. But if mm. it's small and not delicious, ah, yeah. oh. definitely. So, but, um, we were talking about the vegan cheese options there, though. You said there's uh, some options. Yeah. No, no, uh, the two places that I've been to that have cheese. They make uh, their own? One's in Fukuoka. So, that's a long that's a long way away. And they kind of have bento boxes or some shit and they have cheese. But the other one was actually from that restaurant that I don't go back to. Mm -hmm. They use um, a rice cake. So it's like a lovely creamy texture. And I saw you smile just then, but it like totally works. And I think if it was like a rice cake, cashew based uh, mm. cheese, very delicious. I really so want, if, any, if anyone does watch this, um, I'd love to get a recipe for, you know, soup mate. I heard that you can make a uh, um, vegan soup cheese mate. soup. Yeah, you know, soup mates, like one of those no. uh, things on television. It's like a blender that oh, heats up in soup. Like a, like a thermo mix type thing, but. Yeah, yeah, exactly okay. like a thermo mix, yeah, and I sure. heard you can make a vegan cheese in the ah. soup mate. Yeah, definitely. But, but, if anyone knows, let us know their recipe. Yeah. And so well, I just want to clarify: you're saying this vegan cheese is made from nuts and rice cakes? Oh, actually, I, I don't know the exact recipe, I, but it tastes it tastes like the cashew cheese. Mm. You know, exactly like the cashew cheese, except she told me that they use rice cake. Wow! And do, can you get nutritional yeast in Japan? No, Mickey bought it back from Australia for me. Oh, lucky. Um, and actually, I ordered some online from the States for like 13 bucks delivered. Mm, that's alright. So it's about the same price as yeah. what it is in <laughs> Australia. Yeah, yes. <laughs> um, so, you were talking before that Jeremy actually was a bit more um, positive with his advice. And he actually yeah. advised Nigel to check out um, the Japan Vegan Restaurant Guide that was actually released in 2010. And yeah. he said there's updates uh, on the website, and this is the website, vegan um, hyphen hyphen, so two hyphens in a row, japan.blogspot.com.au. It and comes up if you put it into Google. What, the name? Japan if Vegan put, Restaurant Guide? I put Japan Vegan, and then it came up. Oh, cool. So, yeah, yeah. it's easy hey, to her, find. Her wins Vegan Japan. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Yeah. So yeah. Jeremy was saying the guide's pretty good. I'm not sure if you can buy it anymore because it's what five years old now. But um, if you go to that website, they have actually updated it a lot, and they'll tell you what's good and what's bad. But I, I remember Nigel saying something to me that it's hard to find places because of the street. You can't find street names, or even if it if it's meant to be on the level you're at, but it could be underneath. Yeah. So have you found that sort of stuff happen? Um, no. Mickey reads Japanese. She's Japanese, so... <laughs> That's yeah, easy. She's, she's pretty good at finding shit. <laughs> and it's all it's all grid pattern, so I'd say just Jeremy went to the wrong spot. Like, it's kind of difficult to get your head around the... Um, instead of it being a street and one street having a number from 100 to... You know, from zero to whatever. Mm -hmm. It kind of... It's in a block, you know? So, mm -hmm. like, block 16, like house five or house five on block 16 mm -hmm. you know that's kind of the way it works instead of it being you know a long street it's kind of done by block is there any order within the block um no not really okay yeah. Mickey's shaking your head i i think yes because my house is next door to 
my house is six and it's next door to seven so mm. i kind of think but it maybe is, but not always <laughs> yeah maybe apparently it's done by the way the order was built in oh, you know wow. a block okay. 15 yeah. and like one house went up first so like that house was built <laughs> first so if you're a postie imagine that <laughs> that'd be up. horrible yeah <laughs> uh, that's why they will go crazy <laughs> yeah. but japan's definitely like a great place to come but don't come here on a food holiday you yes know? bring yeah. bring bring vitamins yeah, don't come for the food. Come for well, you you just were there um, snowing with your family over Christmas, weren't you? So yeah. people can go there yeah. for snowing, snowboarding, skiing. Yeah, I mean, sorry. Yeah, it's a, it's actually a very like it's a very natural place. Does that make sense? Like it's city, but they've got um, pretty good. Like you know, Brisbane's kind of sprawled out, and mm. like you might be kind of in a forest, but some dickhead built their house there. <laughs> you know? uh, but in Japan, it's very much like. The city end is the city end, and mm. you know the hill starts. And there's definitely, there's definitely, um, I don't know, very like decent town planning around, like not intruding into natural areas like there That's is in good. Australia. Yeah, I think especially around the area you in, uh, you're in, where yeah. there's, it's very built up to like right up to the border of say, I don't know, whatever that natural park, whatever that park is, just near you. Like the Daisy Hill Forest. That Daisy one? Hill yeah. Forest and the yeah. one over the back is it Venmans? Mm. It's like farmland built right up to the fence. It could. Most, uh, yeah, I know what you mean. I can't think of the name. Yeah, it's like a chicken farm right on the fence yeah. of a natural area. You yeah. know, like it's just very offensive. Yeah, there's been so many complaints about that chicken farm. Actually, like the odor and the, um, the local MP, the independent MP, she's been doing a lot of work, but it's actually in. Um, uh, I'm I was sort of on the outs, like on the edge of Logan and Brisbane, like the councils. So this is actually in Brisbane council. So it's really hard to get stuff done because it's affecting a lot of people in Logan. But it's actually a Brisbane. It's based in Brisbane. So lots of dramas with that one. Yeah, I I, I always wondered if they were gonna when I think it was Peter Beatty bought in the super councils. Yeah. Is that the super areas? I was always wondering if they were gonna have lack. Like, uh, public liaison officers to work in between the councils, and they, they obviously didn't. It's yeah. kind of something you just expect from like a Labor government that are so <laughs> you know bureaucratically heavy. You know, I think it'd be would have been a smart idea to have something like that. Well, even like the one of the streets um, called Priestdale Road, half of it's Logan, half of it's Brisbane. So yeah. if you know some, there's all potholes, and sometimes half of it'll be okay because Logan's looked after it, or the other half will be okay because Brisbane's looked after it. But mm. you know, just little things like that—that's ridiculous. Yeah, I oh, will. I think Australia as, politics in Australia is a very difficult kind of thing because there's so much um, there's so much riding on politics, like the politics in Australia. I think a lot of the LNP people don't get in there with the right idea. You know. Um, like a lot of the labor guys get in there and they kind of they think they're going to make a change for the better but a lot of a lot of the times LMP candidates are you know kind of hacks from you know university they're like tie overs from young libs they're not necessarily as successful as their peers and they get into politics to kind of you know like knock down some doors for their you know their friends like obviously there's like a big sell off at the moment mm. um they're trying to sell I don't know whatever whatever whatever, in, whatever public's like mm. publicly owned infrastructure they're trying to sell it off at you know a bargain basement price to a like a rich conglomerate that you know should like either be kind of improving the thing but they won't improve it they'll make it you know they'll make it more profitable which yeah, would be yeah. you know a loss of jobs and mm. you know or just leasing them for a hundred years yeah I think it's very very disappointing you know the toll road was a um, was a publicly owned thing mm -hmm. and they turned it into a publicly owned um, corporation and now people can buy into the toll road so you know mm -hmm. that toll road is going to be a toll road forever yeah you know exactly. instead of it instead of it being put back into the into the common space yeah, yeah. That's, like, that's how they get you isn't it they say oh we're gonna have this toll road and then in two years time we'll pay it off but they never mm -hmm. get rid of the toll road so i think yeah. there's only one place in the sunshine coast that the toll road actually was gotten rid of because of like local people demanding it yeah but i don't know many other toll roads that have that i think that's the only one i know of to be honest that's been stopped because of pressure from locals yeah well in japan 
they have just permanent toll roads and it costs like nine dollars thirty to travel seventy k's on a toll road. Nine dollars thirty. Whoa. It's unbelievable. That's ridiculous. Like, yeah, it cost me we to were... go two hundred and fifty seven kilometers cost me sixty eight dollars in toll. <gasps> like on a sale, like I can't believe it. When Why? I like when when I was paying for it I was like, This is crazy. And like you could take a you could take the back streets but it'll take you a day and a half, you know, you're not burning more in fuel, so. So that's like, like Australian dollars when you're saying that costs that much? Yeah, I'm converting, because oh. I paid for it on my Australian card. Mm. So, yeah, definitely. That's very, painful. <laughs> very, very expensive. So, so what, are you, cheap, what are you sorry? missing? What are you missing in Australia or in Western uh, cultures? Um, I think the food mm. and a lot of the other stuff that I say might sound culturally insensitive. Um, J- Japanese people are very polite. Mm-hmm. I'm sure people have told you that before. So yep. their politeness can sometimes be very, very rude because mm-hmm. instead of them just telling you the truth and like you being able to fix something, um, there's a lot of uh, communication problems that I'm having mm-hmm. because they won't tell me uh, something that I should like. I should just know. Mm-hmm. You no. Know? So yeah, I, I kind of find there's a couple of cultural barriers that are kind of difficult to deal with. Not. Like not because they're trying to be bad people, but yeah. just just very difficult yeah. cultural, like cultural norms in Japan that I don't think would be normal outside of East Asia. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You might need some more light on your face, Chris. You're getting a bit black or dark. Oh, sorry. It's getting it's getting night time. Yeah. Quarter yeah. To five. Believe it or not, um, about a month ago, we're halfway through winter now. Yeah. About a month ago. Yeah, it's better, but I thanks, Mickey. Um, about a month ago, at four, say four thirty-six, the sun went down. Now, it's really? like, yeah. Oh wow. That's Maybe it's just something I'm only noticing now that I'm older. But could be. Yeah, yeah. I've never, never really tracked the sun. Maybe because <laughs> of the Weather Channel app, I check what time the sun's coming up. <laughs> so I know what time to get out of bed. So. Oh, because you're getting up earlier because of your little baby. No, she, she wakes us up when she wants to, and then goes back to sleep. That's pretty good. Yeah. She's so, um, cool. last year, Chris, let's talk about a few vegan things that happened maybe last year in your life or in general. Well, I think you might have to educate me. Obviously, um, I used to I used to really care about that stuff and stuff <laughs> that was very important. But I don't know. I think you know I've just had it like for so long. I don't necessarily. I'm not necessarily as interested in little tiny advances. So you might have to educate me. Well, I guess, like we were saying before, like probably one of the biggest or massive things that I've seen is like how big um, veganism is in Israel and how many people are adopting it. Like at least half of the population is supposedly vegan or vegetarian. And there was a girl on Big Brother, um, Israel Big Brother, who spoke and was and actually had the stuff that she said. Um, filmed and viewed by so many people um, about veganism and animal rights um, and the... It goes deeper into like, Israel is a religious state, right? Mm. So, they have a thing called uh, kosher food, obviously I'm sure mm-hmm. everyone knows about kosher food so I think a lot of kosher, like things that are kosher are kind of loopholes in the mm, system, that's true. you know? Yeah. So, I think particularly for the three big religions, I think maybe some of the things that they've kind of found loophole p- for in the past or oh, loopholes loopholes yeah is that the best yeah. i don't know whether that sounds offensive um but they've kind of found like a, a dogmatic loophole for say eating meat if like uh one of them they have to kill an animal in a certain way to make it like actually like biblically or tyrannically or quranically um <laughs> correct mm. it um you know is kind of much crueler than what it would be if it was killed outside of that yeah, so i definitely. think a lot of people are kind of being enlightened to the idea of you know maybe their religion has you know got a couple of rules in there that shouldn't have been you know loopholed around yep. but maybe not i could be totally wrong i'm really anti-religion so uh i've kind of always kind of clung on to that like do you really think your god would want you to eat meat Mm. So I could be I could be totally wrong. I'm sure that we could get a rabbi, a vegan rabbi, to come on and explain why it's okay to eat kosher meat. But 
Yeah. Well, maybe not on a Saturday. We'll have to do it on a different day. <laughs> Um, well, I, I think it's, I know a lot of people have said that guy, oh, I've just forgotten his name, that guy who did, you know, the best vegan speech ever, Gary Uranofsky, he, I don't know if you've seen it, but it's like a nah. massive success online in particular, and it's been ch yeah. um, translated to 21 plus um, languages, so really? it has, yeah, it has the potential to actually reach so many more people, so he has been to Israel quite a lot. Because I believe he's a supporter of a lot of Israel um, ideals, and so he goes there a lot, and he has a lot of supporters because of that. What's Israel ideals? Um, I don't, I don't really know too much about it to get into it, but I do also know there. So was, he's a supporter of the state of Israel. I, I don't know enough about him to to say, but I would, I, I think so. I believe that. And so there's a lot of people that um, you know follow him, and he's been he's been um, interviewed quite a lot on TV, and he's got a lot of mainstream media from it. So he's really um, promoted veganism and in particular animal rights to Israel, which is pretty good. Wow! And even their army like has leather non leather boots and serves vegan non leather food. boots. You can choose from, or non leather boots as a rule. Not sure. Not sure about that, but I think a lot of well, those. Well, it makes sense. Like, you know, it's meant to be a peaceful, like you know, pacifist religion. It makes sense to not kill an animal for your food. That's not very, you know, it's not very pacifist. Yeah, that's not, true. Not pacifism. And definitely, pacifism. definitely, there's a lot. I, of I sound really ignorant talking about this because I'm trying not to be rude. I really hate all the religions, so. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying not to be rude. I think <laughs> I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of scope in uh, religion for good for good, but I think it's a very bad thing. And I think yeah. you know, particularly particularly we're talking about Israel. I think you know they have a lot of like like regional um, policies that are very like very aggressive. And I don't I think being vegan is you know wonderful, but there's other there's you know other things in their society that they should be doing along with that to. To change a lot of the things, my baby's crying. <laughs> it's alright. It's alright. It? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I, I, there's there is a bit of backlash about about um, Israel adopting a vegan diet as well, and one of them, especially with the army embracing a few vegan sort of things, there's still an army, an Israel army, so a lot of people do have issues with that as well. Yeah, so everyone has to join the army. You know that, right? Yeah, they that's do. Like, every everyone does. It's oh like, wow, I didn't know that. <laughs> it's not a draft. It's like you, for whatever time, you join the army in oh. Israel. Wow. Okay. Um. And so I guess this year I've but noticed that. that but that's not like. So you know, at the moment in Australia and I think around the world with the head, the Charlie head both thing, people are kind of very down on like certain parts of religions, you know, but they're yeah. not willing to address the overlying thing. So I think there's a lot of really good Jewish people. There's a real, lot of really good um, Muslim people, but there's, a, I think we need to have a debate outside of, outside of um, uh, political correctness where we can say, you know, there is some things that you guys could address and things that need to be addressed within your religion before you kind of try and, you know, force it upon the rest of us, and it really is, like, particularly coming from Australia, where I went to a Catholic school, and religion was very forced upon us, mm. you know, like, even though, from a very lo young age, like, I believed in Santa Claus much longer than the idea of Jesus, like, <laughs> Jesus walking on water and shit's totally ridiculous, but obviously Santa Claus was giving me something, so <laughs> I kind of had that little tiny bit more faith, you know, that he made it. <laughs> I yeah. think well, so, I went I went to a Lutheran high school as well, so yeah, it was forced um, through um, on me through my school. Not, and and not your last parents. name, Kosh? Are you German? Um, it's a German name, but my dad's family's Polish. All right, and you went to a Lutheran school. Yeah, well, it was just it was honestly it was the closest school to where we just moved when we moved here right. from Bougainville Island in Papua New Guinea. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know how to spell Bougainville? How you spell Bougainville Island, where I'm from, is like the Bougainvillea, B-O-U-G-A-I-N-V-I-L-L-E, Island. Yeah. 
But not Quick, like uh, the Bogan, B O G A N, yeah, yeah, I know. that is an Australian yeah. sort of term for maybe white trash people, chav. I guess. A chav. Say. Yeah. A chav or a chav, yeah. Mm-hmm. A honky. Honky, I don't know that one. Yeah, Where's that from? Cracker. Oh, okay. Hmm. No, I don't know. Uh, um, I googled something about Bougainville just recently. So, you know, uh, Papua New Guinea have a bit of a, like, a bit of a, uh, lack. What's the, what's the word? They're kind of, uh, not notoriety? Much. Is it notoriety? The, um, Maybe not notoriety. I'm not sure where you're heading no, what's, with this. No, what's the, what's the, the, in, like, kind of infamous for, um, the, uh, like, eating humans? You know, yeah, they had, certain uh, canna- tribes like, in certain areas. Yeah, they had that, yeah. cannibalism. Yeah. And you know they call that long pig? They called it human long pig. Ah. Did you know that? Well, you know. Yeah, I learned that. That's interesting because pigs, I learned in um, college for naturopathy, nutrition, and Western herbal medicine that pigs are actually anatomically exactly the same as humans. If you lift them up, like with their legs, everything's exactly the same as humans. Really? Yeah. That could be why. There we go. We've all yeah. learned something today. Look, long pig. Uh, I won't tell you where I got that from. All your feminist friends will be very angry at me. But yeah, <laughs> long pig is like a um, yeah, very like a very interesting way to describe a meat that tastes like you know tastes like pig, and maybe that explains why some of the religions don't eat. Could you know. Be. Well, I thought it was because like, of the like, hooves. Pigs have hooves, like the devil. Yeah. Or something. Could be wrong, but that's what I, I thought. How do you know pigs don't? Uh, the devil doesn't have cow feet. I don't know, I'm just going with what um, has been passed down for generations of what people think <laughs> of certain things. I don't, I'm, you know, well, I'm anti-organized right. religion What's that? too. Hey? Yeah, but you're very spiritual. Yeah, I definitely... You believe there's something there, right? I, I like to believe in the universe. That's probably about it for me, because I can see it. I can see the, you know tides change the moon phases and how it affects things and people so that's what i see but yeah, yeah. it's um i lo- and i like to believe in the good of everyone i don't understand why people need someone to tell them how to act or how to act in a proper way like i don't understand why people can't go i'm going to be the best version of myself today i'm going to help people and that's it because of my life now Take responsibility, do it now instead of maybe getting some something special when you die. Yeah, sounds fair. <laughs> but yeah, I don't really um, put labels on things, I guess, or try not to. That sounds to me like you've been listening to too much Deepak Chopra. Me? <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> anyway, what's the next topic? The next topic, oh, I was going to talk about all the different um, food things that have been happening this year. For example, the paleo diet. Oh, yeah, that's for dickheads. Is that no. big in Japan? <laughs> no, I don't. I, think, oh, I, ha- I haven't seen it. I certainly haven't seen it. But it definitely is for dickheads. I can't imagine. Uh, uh, I'm, so, I'm not a scientist, so. But you should, def- you should definitely look at the, you know, the reasons why we cook foods and the, the reason we cook certain foods and yeah I, I just don't know enough about it I just know that all the people that are into it in my opinion are dickheads so there seems to be a lot of people who are very focused on being fit or like bodybuilding yeah. or working out and um, they get information from their personal trainer I know quite a few people who who their personal trainers on paleo so they become on paleo and you know, personal trainers don't have much nutritional um, training whatsoever. So chicken pass. Yeah, so I think that's a bit of a worry. But you know, there are some positives to it. There's no um, like processed stuff, no sugar, no eggs. Or, oh no, dairy is it eggs or dairy? I think it's dairy. Um, but you know, they're the positives, and there's a lot more negatives, I think, to it. Mm, yeah. But there's. I just don't. Like- and how getting animal, like eating animals that are vaccinated, was part of the pale, like happened back in the Paleolithic period. Yeah. You know. And how many? Paleolithic. Well, sounds right. I don't know. I really should learn these words before we do a podcast. (laughs) 
Um, but like, I guess, and you know, where would they get their meat? They're not going to raise all their animals um, and then, you know, serve them at their cafes. Like that would just be from the supermarkets where they would be getting all the animal products, which mm. would be. I, I'd, I'd say they get organic meat. I think. Really? I don't know about that. But like there's a is a very there's a couple of strange rules, particularly in Australia. I'm not sure about the rules in Japan or anywhere else in the world. But for something to be labelled organic, it has to meet like a certain like certain criteria, and it doesn't necessarily mean they're not mean they're not vaccinated, they're not fed, yeah. you know, genetically modified foods. That it just means that they've like met certain criteria in the um like in the rearing process. Yeah, you know, it's so pretty scary. It's not if you're buying organic food, it doesn't mean that it's organic. You know, like it's if you buy natural food, like I know you can buy apples and stuff that are naturally um, produced and they're not sprayed with pesticides, mm-hmm. but they they might be sprayed with, you know, I think they can spray, you know, like a natural thing, or they can have lavender or something in the trees that oh. scares off certain um, scares bugs off certain bugs happen. or whatever, and. Um, yeah, but definitely buying organic. You're an idiot if you pay for that shit. <laughs> really? There's a lot of people who are very big on the organic stuff, you know? But better you soil. Meant... Sorry? Better soil, like the growing conditions and stuff like that. Yeah, but like you're paying so much for the actual, for the label of organic. And I feel In really Australia, stupid talking about this, but I, I think like naturally produced food is very, like, very good. So for. what are you hoping to achieve in 2015? Um, this year, me and my girlfriend are building a guest house, so something similar to a backpackers, but it's actually, I think it's illegal to have a backpackers here, oh. or it's very difficult to get a permit for it, oh, so wow. it's called a guest house, essentially it's a backpackers, mm-hmm. but um, it's, co- it's called a guest house, uh, it's going to be called... Uh, we're doing like initially we're just doing like a pop-up backpackers mm-hmm. you know pop-ups are very popular at the moment so even in uh, Japan to, well people coming to Japan is popular for them <laughs> not, not necessarily popular in Japan but <laughs> like it's it's like it's a real backpackers and we're building it in a real in a real space and a permanent mm-hmm. space but um like it's kind of it's kind of a little bit ad hoc because we definitely don't know what we're doing it's very, the very first time we've done uh, anything like this so it's we're kind of running it under a different different name until we uh, really know what we're doing we really we kind of want people to have a good experience you know yeah. a lot of backpackers get doesn't matter what happens people get you know a bit nasty online so mm, particularly if we're not good at it we'll yeah. definitely have it under a different name initially mm. until we get good yeah that's true yeah. that's a good idea so, and will you have like, vegan food four letter words hey it's going to be called Four Letter Words. <laughs> yeah, so kind of a cute name that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with backpackers. Mm. I suppose. But, you know, you kind of feel a little bit a little bit better after swearing. You know, if you hit your head and you go, oh, fuck. <laughs> you kind of feel a little bit better. And we hope people will have... What, yeah, um, what, will you have, like, vegan food there? I know you were talking to me before you left about how you wanted to have, like, vegan... Was it chur- churros and... Um, don't yeah, so um, my my girlfriend Mickey is making is building a cafe or putting together a cafe, but we're going through some stuff for her to get an Australian visa at the moment. Mm. So she, we're kind of putting that on the back burner. Because she until, has to come back every three months or something, is that right? To Australia? Yeah, yeah, going back in April. So she came. She was here for three months. She's been back for two, and um, she has to go back in April. So. We're kind of that's kind of on the back burner. So mm-hmm. we're not necessarily going to have food, but we'll provide uh, breakfast for them, mm-hmm. breakfast for the people staying there. But uh, it'll kind of just be fresh fruit and vegetables, and oh, cool. um, you know, a bowl of rice. Rice is very popular in Japan, obviously, mm-hmm. and um, miso soup. So that's good. yeah, it'll it'll be kind of be accidentally vegan. We're kind of that's that's definitely going to be the approach. We're not going to have anything, you know, that like is in your face vegan but you know softly 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 if someone asks us about it maybe we'll tell them yeah that's a that's a good approach i think and yeah. um uh hopefully nigel and christina might get to visit you over the where yeah. you are or yeah yeah it'd, over there. yeah it'd be great if they i love speaking english so <laughs> and uh, then maybe I, we'll get um nigel on the show later on and um jeremy yeah. who, 
who we were talking about before, he's over in New Zealand at the moment. Um, on... Yeah, it'd be great to get him halfway through the ride. Oh, halfway through? Okay, well, yeah, we'll try that. And yeah. um, I, think, I think it'd be good to get someone else, like, a different opinion on Japan. You know, kind of when you're living somewhere, like, if you live in Brisbane, you kind of you kind of stuck like stuck in your ways and you see it through the eyes of someone that lives there so yeah. i'm kind of seeing a soccer through the eyes of someone that lives here yeah that's true you know and, yeah, even though i do I, I do feel every day like i'm on like i'm on a holiday but mm. you know i kind of go the same way to work yeah you know, same way back and and yeah. nigel's been there a few times now and even with christina and i think i think he really loves japan so yeah it'd be good to hear what he thinks and it'd be yeah. good to hear what Jeremy thinks on his five-week cycling across um, New Zealand or down and up. Well, I don't know. I actually have no idea which direction he's going, <laughs> but that'll be yeah. interesting. Yeah, I wouldn't be riding that around New Zealand. Horrible drivers. They're like worse than Victorians. <laughs> Just horrible, horrible drivers. <laughs> Can't be worse than a lot of people like in Indonesia, like Jakarta. They're horrible in there. Are they? So much traffic, it's just full on. Too many people, too much traffic, bicycles everywhere, and yeah. I, I, I tend to think of everyone's just a bad driver compared to me. <laughs> no, I Unless it, I'm the only person I feel safe with on the road. <laughs> Good luck on road trips then, hey? Yeah. I yeah. think we might wrap it up for the first podcast that we've done, Chris. Thank Sounds you. good. Thank you for joining me and thank you everyone for listening or watching Elsie and CJ's Vegan Talks. Come up with a better name for us for the podcast. Yeah, but, but definitely we'll be much more concise next time. <laughs> concise, you know what concise? We'll, yeah. we'll have brevi- brevity on our side and uh, <laughs> I'll definitely do more research. <laughs> and if you'd like us to speak about a particular topic or... Or if you want to be on it. Yeah, let us know. And yeah. we'll work it out. I, I'd, I would love someone to get on there and hate us, you know, <laughs> you? and just and just stick it to us because it's the only way we learn, you know. Mm, careful what you wish for, Chris. <laughs> yeah, I, le- I learn much more from trolls than I do from, you know, people that I agree with. That's you true, know? you know, if you're open-minded and willing to listen to people and they are willing to listen back and you allow each person to speak, you can definitely learn a lot more. I agree. Yeah. But I also love throwing my hands up in the air and going, what a fucking idiot. <laughs> so, you know, both way, either way, it's great for us. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. thank you for tuning in, everyone, and we'll see you next time. Sounds good. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.